And we're back again, Russell from Aussie Mushroom Supplies, and today we're talking pressure canners. Let's get into it. When you're sterilizing your mushroom substrate at home, the most important tool you'll need is a good quality pressure cooker. Today we've got a um, Presto pressure cooker and an all-American sterilizer. Most pressure canners or cookers only go to 15 psi. Make sure whatever pressure cooker you use, it goes to 15 psi at a minimum. An all-American sterilizer will go to 20 psi and just gives you that couple more degrees temperature to make sure you get everything hot enough inside. A Presto only goes 15 psi, which is 121 degrees and is hot enough to do your basic sterilization. It is important that generally you hot load your products so when you boil your grains and things you want to start with them hot because you don't get as hot in your canner only going 15 psi both units work very well and depending on your budget they'll both do the job you can also get these steam indicator strips and you can put them inside your material to check if it's sterilized properly or not you can get cheaper units but they only go to about 7 psi this won't be hot enough to sterilize your grains or substrate so definitely stick with something like a presto or an all-american to make sure you have the most chance of success the presto those just come in a 21 quart size all americans come in a 10 quart up to 41 quart so you can fit quite a lot of stuff in there an all american sterilizer is an electric unit so they're very handy to set up in your lab next to your flow hood so you're not moving from like the kitchen to your lab space and things like that they are very handy to have they do cost a bit more but they're definitely worth the investment sterilization is getting your material over 121 degrees for a minimum of 15 minutes which will destroy all bad bacteria and other spores in your material. You want to make sure that your substrate or grains you're using is sterile because if it's not, whatever's left in that material will grow faster than your mushrooms and cause you problems down the track. Here's a little graph. This was a core temperature of a bag that we were cooking. We make sure we cook for a minimum of 30 minutes just to make sure everything is sterilized in all the bags in the run. We've gone for about 35 minutes over 121 degrees. We add that extra time because if you've got more than one bag in your run, some things may not get to temperature just as quick as the others. So you want to make sure you cover all bases. When you're using your sterilizers or pressure canners, make sure you read the manual. You want to make sure you have enough water in there for the time that you're going to cook. Generally to get your substrate up to temperature in one of these sorts of units, you need a minimum of about 90 minutes for grain and about two hours for sawdust substrate. Make sure when you're warming up your pressure canner or sterilizer, you have either the vent open or the weight off and you've got to at least vent for a good 10 to 15 minutes so all the cold air gets purged from your bags and jars before you start building your pressure. Make sure you start your time from when you get to full pressure and then once it's finished just turn off the heat and let it cool down slowly. Make sure that when it's cooling if you can cool it down in front of a flow hood do that otherwise just leave it there with the weight on which will keep it sort of semi-sealed so nothing gets drawn in while it's cooling. There's lots of different types of units you can get electric models of these or just stove top models. Stove top if you get an electric hot plate you can put that inside your lab next to your flow hood this means you can have it cooking next to your flow hood and you don't have to move it through the house and possibly contaminate it. You can use other things like gas burners and stuff like that just as long as your heating source is powerful enough to get it up to temperature if it's a small hot plate or a small gas unit it may take longer to heat up the more that's in your canner will all add time so don't freak out if it's taking ages to heat up it will eventually get there just all the substrate needs to get hot before it'll start steaming if you're having bags exploding and substrate going all through your pressure cooker make sure you check out our bag folding video which explains how to fold a bag properly so this doesn't happen if you're getting any bags melting on the sides of the canner try and put some mason jar rings just to keep it off the side and away from the bottom. Again, make sure you read through instruction manuals. I think some of these come with DVDs so you can watch how to run them. Always make sure you've got plenty of water in there so you don't run it dry, because if you do, you avoid your warranty and the bottom gets all disgusting and it's not a good time. Tips for using your pressure cookers and sterilizers. Number one, make sure your pressure cooker cooks at a minimum of 15 PSI or it won't get hot enough to sterilize your material. Number two, Sterilizers are better than pressure cookers. They get to 18 to 20 PSI. That few more degrees in temperature means you'll have much better chances of getting your core temperatures to what you need to be. Number three, make sure you vent for at least 10 to 15 minutes once the water's boiling before closing. This will purge out any cold air and oxygen. If any is left behind inside your bags or jars, this will insulate them and stop them getting to full temperature. Number four, make sure your jars and bags are open. This way the steam can get into them to heat them up quicker but also any oxygen or cold air will be able to get out when you're warming up. 
5. Burping is a great thing that people do. Once the unit gets to 10 psi, take off your weight or open your vent and let the pressure depressurize back down to zero. This will help purge out any leftover oxygen or cold air. Number 6. Always ensure you have plenty of water in your sterilizer or cooker so you don't run out and destroy it. It's also really important to use spring water or deionized water so you have no calcium or that sort of stuff building up and making your cooker go black. If you can get RODI water, there's the best stuff you can use and will make your unit last a lot longer. Number seven, when making agar or grain spawn, pressure cooking is a must. As you're using a high nutrient medium, any bacteria and things left behind, they'll just run right with your material. You can also super pasteurize your fruiting blocks. We will cover this in another video coming soon. Number eight, once you get to your running temperature or 15 psi, 18 psi, start your sterilization time. For spawn and kits, it's generally 90 to 120 minutes. For agar and liquid culture, it's generally 30 to 60 minutes. Number nine, you can overcook your materials at such a high temp. If you go for too long, you can start to break down all the sugars and things in your material. So you generally want to get to the temperature as quick as you can and get it cooled down. Number 10, when your pressure cooker is cooling, it's always best to cool it in front of a flow hood. If it's a sealed unit like a sterilizer, you can let it cool down wherever it is. Just when you go to open it, make sure it's in front of your flow hood, otherwise it will suck in the air around it. Number 11, check out LC injection video and grain to grain transfer video for how to do your transfers. Number 12, see our bag setting video on how to use an impulse sealer. Number 13, you can use a reusable bag clip. These are really popular for sealing bags. We have these on our website. And last but not least, lucky last, we will be doing another video soon. We will be showing live core temperatures going up in real time. So be sure to check this one out. We'll show different things like closed bag versus open bag, larger versus smaller, just to show the differences and how long things actually take to get to temperature. Correct sterilization is a must with mushroom growing. If you don't sterilize properly, you won't kill all the bad bacteria and other funguses in your material. Sometimes these things can go unseen and you keep spreading them further and further until all of a sudden you've got a huge problem. This is why it's so important when you're buying spawn and mushroom kits, ask for proof of full sterilization. Otherwise you could be buying anything. Always ask for proof of full sterilization if you're buying anything from any vendor. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time. Peace out.